Ultra Cycling Magazine Show. Well, hello, Lee Kreider here with Ultra Cycling Magazine. And uh, Joanna, how are you this day? I'm good. And I brought a little friend along with me today, Lee. His name's Bobby. You brought uh, Jude's dog with you. I do. I'm babysitting him. And he's sitting here nice and quiet. What a lovely dog. I got my dog down here beside me. He's not in a position where he's easily to show on camera, but maybe... He'll jump up there in his spot after a while. We'll show him. So how are you doing over there in New Zealand today? What? Very good. Thank you, Lee. We've got brilliant weather still. So I was out riding with the Kiwi Randoneers on a flesh ride, which is a team's event. And we ride from the beautiful city of Sales, Auckland, through uh, the central plateau into some very cold temperatures, actually, for us, zero degrees centigrade, down to the Great Lakes of Rotorua, which all the tourists that come to New Zealand always visit. Um, and it was fabulous. Um, group of four of us. And we had a great time. Thank you. And f- so you know what? Uh, Joanna is getting ready to uh, do a, a journey across Australia in May, is it? It's actually the length of. I'm going from Darwin down through the guts, as they say, down to Melbourne with a little detour around Uluru. Yes, so starting the 18th of May, raising funds and awareness for bowel cancer New Zealand on a supported world record with World Ultra Cycling Association. 4,600 kilometres. My geography isn't that great, but it's not quite the length of it, is it? It's it's from the furthest north. It's a long ways, let's put it that way. <laughs> Yeah, it's as far north as you can start to as far south as you can finish. Okay, um, all right. Yeah. Very good. And we'll be following Joanna on uh, Ultra Cycling Magazine, of course. Won't miss that. Wouldn't miss that for the world, Joanna. Thanks. Uh, we want to thank uh, our time stations here in Ohio because they're the reasons we exist. Race Across America Time Stations 41 in Oxford, 42 in Blanchester and 43 in Oxford. And we always thank Mike Minium, who creates the signs along the road. Um, They are great souvenirs for you, a great place to collect autographs. And you'll find those signs on trophy walls, literally around the world. And you can get them at the time stations here in Ohio during the Race Across America. $10 puts one of these signs uh, in your vehicle. And... um, one sign on the road for Mike. So keep that in mind. If you like to donate, we can't mail them out. They're just too fragile. and The shipping would be too, too much. Uh, but if you'd like to donate a sign, uh, just go to our website, ucm.bike. And on the upper right, you'll find a place there to donate. Joanna. Now, don't forget to follow us on Facebook, y'all. And also subscribe on YouTube. And whilst you're there, don't forget to ring that bell. And uh, we do that because our egos need to have you subscribing to us and following us. But more important is that every time you follow, subscribe, give a thumbs up, make a comment, it makes it more likely that people will see uh, Ultra Cycling Magazine and more likely, they'll find out about ultra cycling. And maybe, who knows, somebody says, that's something I'd like to try. And I hope that's the result of what we do here. So uh, let, since Jim's not here, I'm going to do a little bit of his uh, race across the, the east. I haven't seen the last total. I didn't look that up. But uh, that's happening starting at Blanchester uh, on June 19th, and uh, last time I looked, they had 27 entered. I think there's a couple more since then. Uh, but um, you can find out about that uh, more if you look up our website, ucm.bike, and on the show notes, you'll see a link there. Um, and we want to make sure that you post your comments and questions uh, on the uh, Facebook or YouTube, and we can see them here and we can tell post us where you're from, if nothing else, or tell them how cute you think Bobby is or what you were doing this weekend. We just want to hear from you, Yeah, right? want to hear from you. If you just want to tell us your favorite recipe, whatever, 
we just like to hear from you where you're from. And um, that's great. Um, Calvin's Challenge uh, is back again. Um, our guest tonight, uh, Martin Grivelis, he sh threw up his hands and said, yay, when he, we talked about that before the show started. And uh, they got started a little late. They have 17 people. They've added a couple since we talked last week. And we have a little something here from a special person. Um, hi, my name is uh, Mary Grace Blunt. I'm from Leslie, Michigan. And um, I've been an ultra cyclist for a few years. Um, I've done National 24 Hour Challenge and a few other um, big events. Um, and I've also done Calvin's Challenge before and I'm, I'm really excited to see it return. Um, it's gonna be on May 18th, um, 2024. Um, so the event starts in Springfield, Ohio. And um, there's discounted registration um, through April 1st um, with site registration available the evening before. Um, there's a link in the show notes for the registration. And uh, I hope to see a lot of you out there at Calvin's Challenge. And um, Mary Grace is a wonderful t age of 24. Isn't that great, Joanna? We have to have Mary Grace on after she's done Calvin's Challenge because I what? love her vibe. She's so excited. Um, I just love, yeah, I just love her. Yeah, I, I, well, I told her she's on our radar, Joanna. Yeah. And I so, make uh, it. yeah. Well, let's get on with things here. <laughs> Also, um, Sebring's coming up this next weekend. Uh, Jim won't be with us, I don't, I'm don't. i pretty sure, next weekend, unless remotely, because he's going to be there racing with uh, his partner, April. But uh, Mary Grace is going to be, Mary Grace, Mary Savage is going to be reporting for us again from um, there. Where are you at, Mary? This is Mary Savage reporting for Ultra Cycling Magazine from the beautiful Pacific Northwest. But next week, I'll be in Florida at the Bike Sebring event, reporting with John and Laura Crawford again. So this year is going to be a little different. Normally, John and Laura are competing against each other for the most miles. But this time, John is going to be competing in the 24-hour solo division, and Laura will be paired up with the impressive Maria Parker as a two-person duo, duo in the 12-hour event. Um, they've both been working really hard during the off-season, a lot of Zwift, a lot of nutrition, and even some individual coaching. So I'm really excited to see what they can do. John, instead of chasing his wife's miles, is going to be chasing that elusive Ram qualifier with those 400 miles that have been just out of reach. Laura and Maria, who knows what they can do. So check in with me next week at uh, Ultra Cycling Magazine. And again, my name is Mary Savage. Thanks. Mary does a wonderful job, doesn't she, Joanna? Yeah, she sure does. I'm now pumped to see whether he gets that 400 yeah. mile qualifier for Ram. And I'm excited to see what um, Laura and uh, Maria can do together. They're both strong, strong women. And I'm sure they're going to eat up the course. I'm curious about how they're going to do that uh, as a team when there's a 36 yeah. mile loop. And how they're gonna they're gonna have a follow car to meet them out on the I don't know. I've got to I we'll put in out. A, Let's I put ask in a, Mary Ann to tell us next week. Yeah, I, I um I put in a question to him and ask that question. So it'll be interesting to find out how that works. Um and last week we had uh and somehow missed a report uh from the um Indian uh, brought alacrity group and uh, they did such a wonderful job. We're going to take time out cool. to uh, go back and bring their report in for their two races. They had their, the one race was last weekend, but uh, it's still not too late to watch this. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this race is something that is uh, like long uh, overdue from India. So uh, there was a, like everybody from the audience, the international audience, they were uh, having a simple complaint or they were having a, uh, this type of uh, uh, thinking that uh, Indian roads are not safe and uh, they in India they can't get uh, zero traffic roads. So that was a challenge for us. And uh, we took that challenge and uh, we got this route uh, 
and uh, this route is almost a zero traffic route so this race is uh, inspired from race across the alps we studied that race we got in contact we got in contact with many races over there and uh, we uh, we came to know that what is the toughness what is the challenge and uh, uh, as we started our journey in cycling it is not like we are a professional uh, cyclist but yes we started as any other <laughs> uh, amateur cyclist or amateur guy starts its cycling so we started and uh, we came through the whole process the whole evolution and we came to know that it is what uh, the science of cycling is required to approach this race so then we uh, another story starts this race is along with bias our uh, distance is uh, 600 and this year uh, it is 670 kilometers this year what happened uh, like there is a lot of climate change uh, last two years were like very warm weather uh, in the month of march but this year we are seeing very different climate so uh, when we went for the recce last uh, week we came to know that few patches are really uh, risky so we had to wave them out of the route to make the length same uh, we had to shift uh, our starting point uh, so this year uh, we have a elevation gain of 13000 meters otherwise the standard is 15000 meters so at present uh, we are uh, reaching at 7300 Uh, feet from the sea level yes this is an amp qualifier you have another race in september uh, what is the name of that and tell us about that so our uh, another race is shivalik signature uh, uh, we started that race in 2018 uh, i was there in ram i officiated in ram in 2017 i wanted to check uh, nitty gritty of the race so uh we were very lucky enough we were we are very thankful to fred that he considered us and uh, uh he gave us the ram qualifier for north india so that race is uh, 615 kilometers in total and uh, we cover whole uh, punjab region in that race well <clears throat> we want to thank you for being with us here we know you're very busy right well right now with the race coming up if you people want to learn more about these two races and uh, what these wonderful people are doing uh, there in India you can simply go to the show notes which is below the video and there will be a link there to their website where you can learn more about them thank you so much for being with us thank you sir thank you and uh wow they face up greatly yeah there's some place else for you to go joanna Well, this is the problem. There's so many cool things to do, and now I've well, got my crew. Well, <clears throat> we're so excited to to take time. I know our guest is waiting there, but we're promoting these races around the world, and India is coming on so strong. So uh, much, you know, like since COVID, when I started um, following the um, randoneers group out of India and Grinny, I'm now obsessed. And that one that they're doing, that's got thirteen thousand meters of climbing and six hundred k's, I want to do that. Yeah. Well, it's okay. <laughs> Good for you. Well, next week. Ultra Cycling Magazine. Hi everyone. My name is Yolanda Stratov. I'm part of the Raw 2024 Team Scorpions together with my uh, race partner Uli. We will be on the Ultra Cycling uh, News Magazine show next week, March 24th. So, uh, come check it out. Thank you. And uh, they uh, that team they're both from Holland but they're flying the American flag and uh, we uh want to bring on our guest who has done much the same thing um I was looking for you here Martin you found me <laughs> you found me <laughs> I found you <laughs> hiding out over there in Illinois um Welcome back to uh Ultra Cycling Magazine. Well, it's a new name since you were here, but 
We're glad to have you with us. It's great to be back again. Same great people. You know. <laughs> and I want you to introduce a person I've just met, and that's uh, Lloyd. Yeah, well, Lloyd Munjanja, he's just coming on screen. He is one of the best crew members in the world. <laughs> <laughs> he's <laughs> a number of races for Thanks, me. Uh, oh, yeah, well, it's well-deserved including the uh, the DECA World Championship in Switzerland a couple of years ago, which is a very long triathlon. So he's indispensable. I hope he can come to Italy for another one that's a, a triple DECA, you know, just to amp it up a little bit more. Thank you, Dusty, for being Can out there. Can I say, hey, Dusty? Hey, Dusty! <laughs> and uh, the voice of uh, Ultra Cycling Magazine is here with us as well. Thank you, Greg. And so uh, anybody else out there would like to chime in, say you're here, uh, uh, we'd like to have you do that. Um, my first question to you, uh, Martin, um, is um, what is a DECA? So it's a DECA. It's, yeah, so uh, the, the DECA is basically a race that encompasses 10 Ironmans. There's two versions of it where you do an Ironman every day for 10 days. And there's another version where you swim 24 miles, bicycle 1,120 miles, and then run 262 miles, you know, 10 marathons in a row. So they have both formats. They're both fun. <laughs> <laughs> Joanna wants to sign up, don't you, Joanna? I'm just wondering which of you is more crazy, you for doing these or Lloyd for wanting to cruise. I mean, I don't know, Martin. Yeah, but no. We compete, we compete on craziness, stuff. basically. <laughs> At the end of that, Lloyd, what kind of a whole hot mess is going on with somebody that's done that? Uh, you know, it's funny because it's Martin. Martin is the most positive person you can ever meet, right? I think after after Decker, uh, he had lost so much weight, but he was looking forward to eating. He's like, oh, my God, now I can eat cake. I can eat this. I can, you know, and, and so that's what you need, right? If, so... That's the kind of craziness you deal with when somebody is, is does something like that. Yeah, you have to have a positive attitude to get through this thing, that's for sure. Just like Race Across America, right? Positive <laughs> attitude the, all the way. <laughs> you know, I was talking yeah. about this this morning with a group of friends who are not cyclists. And they were asking something about, you know, the show. And I, I just mentioned uh, <clears throat> what you were doing. And, you know, they just kind of did what we do oh, because it's so much above and beyond. But I talk a little bit about it. And I, I, be, I realize that we will sit down and say, well, here's Mary Savage talking about John Crawford shooting for 400 miles in 24 hours. Mm -hmm. And we kind of say that and just passing. Well, that's just normal stuff <laughs> to people who don't do this. This is just totally beyond their uh, ability to comprehend. And um, it, it's kind of interesting, you know. Uh, I, I don't know how they feel about it. I just kind of passed off a remark about this in passing. Yeah, yeah. I, I got into it bit by bit. I mean, that's how I fell for it, right? I had a grad student, uh, maybe 2005, who was doing sprint triathlons, and he told me to do one. So I, I still remember running around our lake for 0.7 miles and going, oh, okay, maybe I'll make it through that. Yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, it goes to Olympic and then it goes to half marathons and marathons and the 200 mile bike races and yeah. Paris Press Paris. And hey, before you know what you're doing, race across America. <laughs> bit by uh, bit. <laughs> yeah. I remember my first century guy said, uh, we're going to go ride a century, Lee. Oh, yeah. And um, he said, and then the next day we're going to go and do the route backwards. Oh, yeah. And um, when I was finished, I thought, oh, yeah. You know, <laughs> that's right. That's right. But um, um, now, Deca, wh when is it and where is it exactly? Oh, the triple Deca, it's in uh, Garda Lake, Italy. So not far from Verona or Venice. Nice, you know, really nice area. Um, it's perfect for this kind of racing because there's almost zero chance of precipitation. The temperature is, you know, 60s at night, maybe 70s during the day. And so you can basically live in a tent for 30 days <laughs> to finish the darn thing. What's the role of the crew then in something like that? 
Um, obviously, when you're doing supported cycle racing, the crew is behind the rider. But but how does that work, Lloyd? I guess the question to you: yeah. How does that work when you're doing? There's three disciplines. Um, how does that work? Uh, it's actually it's not difficult when you're crewing for Martin. I gotta say it's very simple because it's I very. To say this. Yeah, I know, right? It's very, uh, we are, because I also am very sort of consistent and data, and so it becomes very organized. Uh, so uh, what, well, for, for DECA, the, the one we did was continuous, so it was actually simpler. So you start with the swimming uh, part, you, all swimming, which is uh, was that mm -hmm. roughly tw 24, 25 miles. So, so just swimming, right? So here's how you can do it. You can say we'll swim for uh, 19 hours and then we go sleep the rest of the of the hours and, and then come back and do the same thing. And after swimming, you go into the cycling, right? So, so it's very easy that way. And then after the cycling, you go into uh, the running. So it's much more easy. The one in Italy is going to be a little more interesting because now... You're out, it's like an Ironman, right? So you go from, from swimming into the uh, into, into the cycling and the and the running. So you do one Ironman a day and then you go sleep and then you come the next day to do another Ironman for 30 days. Uh, for, 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 I think it's for 30 days, right? Uh, or until you, you sort of finish uh, 30 Ironmans, right? So how uh, fast you can... There's plenty of things that can go wrong, though. Like, I, I yes. remember in Switzerland, I got Shermer's neck part of the way through yeah. the bike ride, and so they built a contraption to prop my chin up, and, and that kind of saved me. Yeah. And then I suffered the lean, which is an ultra-running thing. It's kind of the yeah. Shermer's neck of running, where your back muscles stop working, and so you kind of just fall over. <laughs> and, and so you can't run anymore if that happens. But, but uh, you know, Lloyd kept me up and going with just the right kind of sleep-wake schedule and, and that mm -hmm. saved the day again. You know, with, as you know, with super long races like this, there's always something that goes wrong. Every couple of days, yeah. you've got to deal with something. Yeah. That, that I, I would add on, I, I was going to add that Martin had an injury back in the day, right, on his shoulder. And of course, he was as he was training the swimming, I think max maybe, I, I don't know if you went more than 10 miles of swimming, but now you are, you're doing uh, 24 uh, miles of swimming. And all those issues, the shoulders started haunting him. Here's what happened. So we had to sort of rethink the whole strategy. He started using his, which is a great strategy. He, he Well, uh, until you realize you have a shoulder issue. So he was using his hands, not using his legs, because he wanted to save his legs for, for the oh, cycling, yeah. right? But but the problem is now you you have one hand so you kind of yeah. you know you kind of using one for the most so so you sort of modify based on what what gets thrown. Uh, yeah, I, I had to do three Ironman distances with one arm basically. Yeah. So, so. <laughs> but then it got better on the bike. You know the shoulder was able yeah. to heal, and a few days later it was good. Yeah. But this time, and I mean, okay, I. I, I struggle with how people do an Ironman because you're going from swimming. It's a whole different muscle groups. Mm -hmm. But thinking about what you're doing this time, and I'm even just thinking from my own example. So you go out for a long bike ride, you ride 400Ks, 500Ks, whatever. The muscles then associated with doing every different things don't necessarily want to cooperate. And in the instance of what you're doing this time, you're not going to do the whole swim, then the whole bike, then the whole run. It's going to be alternating all the time. Mm -hmm. So, how do you manage around, all, uh, from both of your perspective, what do you what do you anticipate being the new challenges that come with that constantly? And and as a crew, Lloyd, what are you going to try and do to work around that? Yeah, good. I actually have some ideas. I think that, 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 that it's really the sleeping aspect, the recovery part. Uh, it's, it's where we're going to, I'm going to bring, if I, you know, get to, to, uh, to Italy, I'm going to bring, I don't know if you know those Nomatech, uh, the Nomatech boots. I'm going to bring a lot of recovery because I think at, at that point you need to be really sleeping well and recovering. Uh, that's, that's my thought. And, and for the most part, the transition between swim, run, they, they're pretty easy. Martin has got some really good gear that he can use on the swim and I think transition that into the, uh, so I, I would think it's it's much easier handling that. Yeah, in a sense, this race is a little bit like a backyard ultra because you got to show up every morning at the same time, otherwise yeah. you're disqualified. 
So really yeah. nothing can go wrong. Your rec- you know, if your recovery is bad one day, you take longer than you sleep, even less, it becomes a death spot. So you gotta be really, yeah. really careful to yeah. stay out of that. But are you anticipating this when you said with your previous um DEXA, am I saying it right? You did all of the swimming, then all of the running, and then sorry, all of the cycling, then all of the running. Which do you think is harder doing it that way where you're just putting the same strain on the same muscle groups for ages and then suddenly changing them? Or do you think it's going to be more challenging constantly swapping between them? So I, I think the, the the continuous is probably the tougher one because, as you said, you're on that bike for thousands of miles. You're running hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of miles. So there's always that constant stress. But the one a day, I think, is probably the harder to finish. And again, the reason is what often happens to people just a few days into this race is that something messes up a little. Your stomach goes sour. Something happens. You take two hours longer to race. You sleep two hours less. You get up the next morning and you're already toast. And then, you know, it, and then within one or two days, it's over. So I think in this race, really everything has to be just fine tuned to be perfect mm-hmm. every single day. That's what makes it so tough. In the continuous, if you have a bad day, I mean, I've known people who've had, went to the hospital, got an IV and, and went back and were able to finish. Yeah, okay. But that's not going to work on a day. And, and from a nutritional perspective, Lloyd, I mean, again, yeah. I, I don't run or swim, so I don't pretend to know, but I imagine that your gut and its ability to absorb nutrients is going to be different when you're running versus when you're yeah. cycling. And Lord alone knows how, what does that happen when you're swimming? I've watched that movie, but, you know, you can't, I, yeah, I don't get it. So how do you think this time around you're going to have to manage that nutritional aspect? Oh, thanks, Jerry. Um, in order to make sure that you're constantly able to transition through those different disciplines. Yeah, that's a great question. I think what we did last time was we were weighing, uh, so say for, ex- for even for swimming or in, in running or cycling, we were weighing much in every cycle. And this is actually one of the challenging right. parts of it. So e- every loop, he goes a loop, we come, you, we weigh him and we feed him. And, and this actually, to we even knew how much calories were in, in every everything he ate, right? And so... Uh, the cycling is not a problem. The running is also not a problem, considering the paces that Martin is running. Sorry, Martin, because we yeah. compare our paces, right? So the paces at which Martin, Martin is running, say, 14, 15 um, uh, uh, minutes uh, 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 per mile, you know, you can take a uh, peanut butter sandwich and you can sort of, you know, go. So we were weighing him, and, and uh, the swim part, again, not uh, not not problematic because uh, he, Martin also can handle food. I, I don't know. This is a, comes from training. He can handle food and things as long as we know how many calories, how much weight is losing, water intake, also salt intake as well was very critical. Yeah, so we're you. on top of all of that. Um, yeah, so I, I I guess this is where we use our you know sciencey backgrounds. It's always mathematics with these things, right? It's 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 what this is why what... I'm fascinated because I think it has to be a very precise, yeah, well orchestrated plan because there's no room for messing up. Yeah, um, no. and and I guess from that perspective, without wanting you to share things that you don't want to share about your strategies, but. Do you adopt the approach of go out hard while you're fresh and try and bank some time? Or is it a very consistent pace that you're trying to hold throughout the 30 yeah, days? Absolutely. That's a great question. No, it's we don't that's not the strategy at all. If anything, we we Martin was the last one to get out of the pool, uh, out of the pool. Uh, but he sort of knows where you can get the time. The time we got out with the cycling and also handling stress. Uh, mm-hmm. handling that stress or handling with, I think uh, what happened was when it started raining during the cycling, a lot of people could not handle that mentally, you know, and, and so people started dropping and people were sleeping. And so, but what we were doing was very consistent, consistent amount of work, consistent amount of sleep from start to end. And that was it. We never truly really did change it. Okay, yeah, I'm completely into even pacing. That's right. They sleep yeah. the same amount each day, right from the beginning. Right from the yeah. beginning. I, I don't do the ride for two days <laughs> at the beginning of the race thing. I sleep on a schedule. Uh, you know, it rained. 
for three days in a row. It was 40 degrees rain at night. I still rode my 19 hours, you know, every yeah. day. And, you know, yeah, yeah. Do you think, I'll, I'll, this is going to be my last question before I let Lee jump in. I'm being yeah. super interested, partly because I'm super interested, but I always love learning from people that know more than me and you know so much more than me. From a mental side of things, which, which do you think is going to be more challenging? I'm picturing you on the beginning of the the last decks you did where you did all the swim, all the bike, all the run. Mm -hmm. You're staring down the barrel of a very, very long time doing a repetitive task. And the swim, I imagine, particularly for me. But then this time, your mindset has got to be very different because you're a, a short amount of time, relatively speaking, swim, short amount of time bike, short amount of time run. Which do you think is mentally more challenging? Is it is it the staring down the barrel of days on end doing the same thing? Or is it the need to keep the mindset so continuously? Yeah, they both have their challenge. I mean, in the continuous, the challenges, as you're saying, it seems like there's an infinite swim, infinite bike right ahead. And the way I deal with that is to just break it up into little pieces. I think this is what many ultra racers do. I think about, you know, my next feeding period when Lloyd hands me my food is half an hour from now. So I'm going to swim for half an hour. And then the next time I get to sleep is now only four hours from now. So I need to swim only another four hours. Or so. And then the same on the bike. Uh, in the, uh, uh, in the uh, uh, one a day race, I think the panic, mental panic there is, what if something goes wrong? What if something happens? You're always worried. You're not worried about, in principle, you ride 112 miles and, and run a marathon. But it's, but what if I, what if something goes wrong and I can't do it tomorrow, right? And so you have yeah, to have yeah. an in trick, though. You just think about, you know, today I just need to ride 112 miles. I do that three times a week. It's nothing, and I need to run a marathon. I do that twice a week. It's nothing. I'll just do it. Yeah. And so I think they both have that same problem that you need to conquer, which is don't look too far ahead. <laughs> I think that's really the key. That's good advice. Yeah. Yeah, John, I was going to add one of the things that I'm trying to learn in my own uh, sports. I, I, I run and sometimes I go choose a one mile loop and just and do 20 miles on that loop. Right. So that's one of the biggest uh, things that we I, I don't know how Martin really handled that. The running, uh, the, the swimming was on, I think it was at 50 meters or 100 meters. So it the was swimming 50 was floor, 50 meters. So you're just going like this. Like, this is not swimming from here to there. It, it, it's just like that, right? And then the running was on a 0.6 mile loop. 0. 0.6, not even one mile. Okay. <laughs> so, so, so that would drive me crazy. And and and. And so, I'm worried about a 3,000 kilometer straight line in the outback before I get to a town. Yeah. 0. 0.6 of a yeah, mile. It, it's it's like that, right? And right. so, so, but it's actually very incredible if you were to try it and train like that. It, it almost helps you somehow to to look at that as not a circle, but as a long thing. But mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I, I'm working on it. Uh, but that's one of the biggest challenges. I think uh, uh, he 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 did, and he did it so, so well. He can break down that loop into so many beautiful loops i don't know how to get it. yeah I, you know, it's i call it the lizard brain you know because i'm, I'm a scientist so I'm, most of my work is just at computers you know deriving equations doing stuff like that so this is kind of the exact opposite you you have this little thing and uh, you know i turn on some music and by the way even the music that i play i play only 100 pieces that repeat probably 50 times each one of them during the race it's actually comforting yeah. to me so i think of this as Oh, oh I'm doing okay. six, six miles, but now it's a Beethoven symphony instead of uh, uh, you know Queen playing, right? And yeah. so there's, there's things. It's like a mosaic that does slightly different things every time, and that's kind of what you focus on. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> it's interesting you brought that subject up, Martin, because uh, <clears throat> you have written two books, maybe more books, but two I know about. And I was gonna at this point, I was gonna hold one of them up, my autographed copy of Masters of Ram. It was right here at one well, in yeah. Studio B. There. <laughs> <laughs> on my desk. Uh, and I love that uh, <clears throat> autograph. And actually, um, to my surprise, my name appears in the book. You bet but, it does. <laughs> <laughs> anyhow, <laughs> the problem with my house here, there's too many places to lay things. And when I went to grab it this afternoon, 
I don't know where I laid the dang gun thing. It was laying right there next to my work desk all week. Uh uh, Lee, I have the same thing. I've I've got a reading glass like in every room. <laughs> that way, I don't need to look for them. Yeah, <laughs> That's solving the problem. I, yeah, me too. <laughs> Anyhow, and then your next book, more recent, was what uh, the the yeah, this guy mastering mastering the Deca. The They're all there's master always somewhere in the title. Yeah. It's a master phrase. And you apply <clears throat> in there a lot of data a lot more data to the whole thing than anybody I've ever seen before. Yeah. Um, you know, if you look at the, if you look at these books, they're like full of tables and figures. Chart and after chart after chart. So because you know, some people don't like that, but other people, people do. So the book has everything a little bit, but right? it's got descriptive chapters where I just walk people through arrays, both, at, uh, uh, you know, 10 Ironmans in a row and one continuous where you do, you know, each of the three pieces of and one. if you go to the show notes for this show uh, at ucm.bike, there's links to both those books on Amazon. I don't know if that's the best place to buy them for you uh, or not. Yeah, it is actually if you if you are a Kindle subscriber, it's free. I, I made the cost basically zero because you know the, the, these books are pretty specialized. The audience is, I think, I sell a few hundred a year, something like that. But basically, ultra racers. Yes, well, <clears throat> so. you're about to sell one to me. I mean, not the Deco one. I think that's insanity. Yeah. But I, uh, I'm about to go on to Amazon. I reckon everybody who's into ultra distance should, because you must learn a lot. From somebody I will tell you, though, you, you talk to the people at the Deco and they think Ram is insanity. Like, I go, I can do 1,100 miles <laughs> on a bike, but 3,000 yeah. is like. Well, like, let's face it, folks. <laughs> we're in a niche sport. Uh, in fact, I've said that we're a niche inside a niche. Um, and I've exaggeratedly said there's only 10,000 people in the world that have mm. ever heard of ultra cycling and 5,000 of those don't care. So, mm. uh, you know, I, I'm sure this, <laughs> that's not true, but the point is we, we are a very small audience. Um, <clears throat> somebody mentioned about our show going viral. I said, no, we're, viral for us is a thousand viewers. <laughs> and so at any rate, uh, the but, other uh, 5,000 care a lot, though. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's it. it. The 5,000 who care it. are intense about it. Yes. And you're the people that we are targeting. And, of course, we always like to pick, pull in. You know, we've, we've had some people that have found about ultra cycling here. And I can name at least one person that got into the sport because of the show. Yeah. But um, anyhow... Uh, they're good books, and uh, well, I haven't read the other one. I don't have it, but um, uh, it, it takes a different tack than some of the books, but it is really great. Yeah, Lloyd, uh, and, I are, Lloyd and I are working on the third one soon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If all goes well at my running race in June, okay. it is a ten-day continuous run. <laughs> well, well, Jane uh, says yeah. she's got a copy of Mastery of Psych, a winning strategy. It took a while to make through, but I was impressed with the diligence. Yeah. of accurate data so um and i'm, Lloyd, planning, I'm planning on doing ram in the mail you know 50 to 60, sorry, 60 to 69 in uh, 25 so next year all goes well so yeah. that was my next question is what uh, <laughs> i always feel it you know you say person well after ram what <laughs> it's you say wait a minute <laughs> after I just, I'm just trying to think about getting through this. That's right. Well, I did take a break from cycling for a few years. I mean, I still sort of cycled a, a bit as a, you know, but I got into ultra running for a few years and then ended up doing bad water, which is a fairly hot race in, in, in that field. Um, so, but then, but then I was done with that and I got, oh, now ultra triathlon, let's add some long swimming to that. But I think I'll be through that cycle by the end of the year, and then it's back to Ram. <laughs> Yay. Lloyd, will you be part of that, or have you, do you feel that you uh, guys are going to need a little time apart after this? Oh, no, no, no. I, I would love that. I would, honestly, I always learn a lot uh, from, from Martin. You know, I, 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 I need to also just write a book straight just on the yeah. crew side of things, on, on, on what to you know who who to crew for you know sometimes it's it's important who you crew for 
Uh, but Lloyd is dynamic. one of those people, not just me. So mm-hmm. he's yeah. Yeah. He's oh, I, I, I'm glad hey, Rupert, buddy, it's Ruby. Rupert chimed in. I knew he was out there. Uh, and I believe, uh, is it not, uh, Rupert, aren't you doing RAM this year? Uh, give me another text and confirm that. <clears throat> Um, Rupe's done his run for the year, I think. He yeah, will after last yeah. year. Maybe he's going to do something different. Yeah, anyway, that this book's going to give you a good idea on, on what to do and, and what not to do, right? That's that's yeah. actually often. I would say Rupert, more- by the way, is in Australia. should yeah. point that out. Kind of just across the pond, across the lake there from uh, Joanna. That is true. Um, Lloyd, yes. crew duties. Let's get real. Just pretend he's not there. Yeah. What are the hardest parts of um, crewing, oh. do you think? Oh, good. Uh, is to keep the <laughs> – yeah, you have to – so so they tell you – okay, you decide on the rules and what you need to do, right? And then they start getting tired and they get um, uh, blisters and, 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 and they start wanting to change their strategy – and so that's oh. and and so you as a crew, you need to keep you know exactly why you're doing that strategy. And so you you almost have to put your foot down and maintain right. that strategy. So, right. so, <laughs> so, right. so yes, I had to put my foot down on certain things, right? So I, you know, so I won't so that I was not popular at one point, but but you know what? That's why we agree, and th- th- because. When, what happens is when someone is tired and they're exhausted, you know, you you sort of have to take over the sort of the, the rationale, the data-driven and all of that, yeah. and you need to keep it. And you also yeah. have to, to be, have that self-awareness of your own self to know when you're also tired and, and manage to balance their tired and you're tired and still find some some sensibility in, in everything you do, right? Um, so So that is one tough one. And, and also managing, <laughs> managing. so it depends on how many people you have on your crew, right? It could be so many. And now managing how, their tiredness and it, it, people. So here's what Martin said, and this is so incredible. He said this because now I think about it every time I go on a vacation with my wife. And okay. usually, usually when you go on a vacation with my wife, we have one or two arguments where we want to divorce each other. Yeah. Like one yeah. or two, you know. <laughs> and, and Martin said this to me. He's like, you know, this was not bad because all this time we spent, almost my more than two weeks we were doing this thing, we only had maybe one or two like really bad arguments. So, so if you think about it, we're actually good in the scheme of things, right? Um, that so, is a good way of looking at it. No, 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 no. That was so cool. Like, you know, I realized like every time I go on a vacation with my wife, and this is a vacation. This is there's no stress involved. We're in the we're in the Bahamas, you know. So <laughs> you know, so this is so so I, I thought that was pretty pretty cool to for him to say that. And I I I think it's gonna happen, and, and you just have to be on top of managing yourself, managing others, and, and knowing all those energies. But more importantly, always, man, is crew ma- making sure your issues never get to the to the um, to the athlete, right? Right, right? And, and and that's very important. And so I think we 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 did well. Uh, yeah. Do you Just, find Martin that you're able to keep out of that stuff? Because I know for me, um, it's a real thing. I don't want to know. I'm not capable of knowing if there's any drama going on, and I find out about it it's the beginning of a downward spiral for me because you're so tired, you then start to overthink things. Um, pole vaulting over mouse poop is yeah, what my no, I, I, I agree. How do you I mean, deal with that? The, the crew, <clears throat> I mean, the crew usually <clears throat> tries to hide. Yeah. yeah. Like when I did a ram in 2016, uh, you know, one of my crew cars ran into a, another car and totaled it. <laughs> And I still remember being at the uh, you know uh, the dinner after the race, and one of my crew members was nudging like, "Did you tell him?" <laughs> and like, and I went like, "Tell me what." <laughs> and that's, that's <laughs> but it was actually okay because again during the race there was no point in me knowing. 
that that was going on. So, and, and then the other thing as Lloyd said is, you know, the racer will be down someday and then crew members yeah. will be down some other day, but then sometimes they'll be down at the same time. And you just yeah. have to be aware of that beforehand and realize, look, this is yeah. just part of the business. You're going to yeah. all hate each other for like a couple of hours. Just don't pay attention as much as you can to it, yeah. through it somehow. And, you know, Six hours later, everything will be peachy again. Yeah. Lloyd, uh, is your crew pretty uh, established? Do you have pretty much the same people all the time? Are you having to replace people, recruit new people? How's that work for you? Yeah, I, I think for the most part, yeah, we met, right, Martin? I think we're thinking of recruiting some new people. I think uh, Jay has been part of the team for a while, and I think we work very well with Jay too. Uh, yeah, there might be some new folks, but um, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, Jay, Jay Yost, by the way, runs uh, Jay's Ultra yeah. Cycling Challenge. It used to be known as the Fat Ass Race in yeah. uh, Illinois at the uh, beginning of June. So yeah. come if you're in Michigan or Missouri or Ohio or somewhere and you're not super far away. One more race besides yeah. Calvin's that you can do in the Midwest. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I I'm really just, hoping that you guys are going to do RAM next year because that's certainly my goal. If I can hold my bleep together mm -hmm. during the four and a half thousand Ks across Aussie, the only thing that's a downer for me about you both doing RAM is I can't steal Lloyd, which would have been my. <laughs> I gotta say, I, I I have a feeling that Lloyd would never be in the lacking for a job in crewing. I bet he's not. He sounds an absolute <laughs> hero. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, if the team, if the yeah. timing is right, who knows? You know? yeah, that's yeah. that's yeah. right. It's always it's always timing. Yeah, no, we I don't know. We I loved it. Um, it's it's mm -hmm. so incredible when you work with someone with a positive attitude and they know their job. They know their job. They they just need to do their job and let everything else be taken care yeah. of. And it's incredible. Right. And another thing that I do that helps, at least from my perspective, is. I actually have crews take multi-day shifts. So I have actually crew that come in sometimes halfway through RAM and then help mm -hmm. finish up. And what that does, it brings in fresh blood. Somebody who's not tired, who's able to drive the car at night again, whereas the other people are you know, more or less like, whoa, you know, <laughs> falling asleep. So that also helps. But then you have to be careful because you, know, you don't want to mix people in the middle that don't know what they're doing all of a sudden. Yeah. They're so on a different vibe, them. I imagine, then. Yes, to right. the you need to train them beforehand. So what I do is I actually bring the whole crew together for practice races before the race and they get to know each other there. And so if even somebody shows up five days into a race, they've already worked with the other people mm -hmm. before and they know them already, but they're fresh. They have rested. You know, they're ready to do things that are difficult for other people. I really hate to interrupt this conversation. You say that every weekly, but you do it anyway. Don't I you? interrupt it anyway. I mean, um, uh, I, 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 I watch the analytics and uh, we're, we're about to the place where people are going to say, you know, this is great, but I got to go do something else. And um, I want to thank you, uh, Lloyd. It's been a joy to get to know you. Uh, you. Wow. What a tremendous Listen. resource you are. Mm -hmm. And Martin, as always, we love having yes. you here on the show. And what a weapon. That just get crazier every year. Isn't yeah. Joanna good at this, guys? Isn't she Two wonderful? Thumbs Two thumbs up. <laughs> she no, wait, I, I, she keeps guess. worrying about whether she can do a good job or not. And uh, boy, if it weren't for her tonight, I'd really be in trouble. And, and I uh, want to see you at the start line in 25. <laughs> mate, I think it's a date. I right. think it's an official date. Okay. Lloyd, well, uh, yeah. Make sure you can trust you, or else I'm going to steal you. Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, I, I wanted to say, Joanna, yes, I don't know how we can be connected. Maybe you already have my emails. I, 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 we'll I was going to out. say, I would, I, my dream, one of my dreams is come to New Zealand and just cycle over there. I'm also an ultra cyclist, too, by the way. So, nice. I, I, yeah, I would love to come over there and cycle. We will make it happen. Yeah. Thanks, Jerry. And um, like I said, I uh, <laughs> Joanna caught me saying the same thing over again. But all what am I supposed must, to do? All good things must come to an end. All good right. things have to come to an end. Thanks, everybody, for being with us. Thanks, everybody, for watching. All of you who made comments, we appreciate that so much. Be sure to follow us. Subscribe to us, and if you're on YouTube, ring that bell. That's why you get to know. You won't right. miss a single show that way. 
So uh, let's uh, get Greg in here, see if he can uh, get us out of here. This and, and is Gregory Zuber thanking you for watching and sharing. Music by Kevin McLeod.